We are living in times right now where the prophetic voice is needed like never before. And many of you are telling me that you are getting dreams. You're having visions of God calling you to prophesy to kings, to presidents, to film stars, to rappers and rock stars. And in today's video, I'm going to deal with how do you know when you're called to do that? How can you be sure? And when do you know it's time to actually step into that? Why? Because we are living in times of deep darkness and especially people in these high positions don't often have access to words of light and words of life. And God wants to use you to bring that to them. So as we start into this week's weekly word of prophetic and encouragement, before I start, I want to encourage you just to take a moment to subscribe to my Ardeline YouTube channel. In the coming months, I'm going to be talking more and more about, you know, the times we're living in and how to respond to them. It is crucial that we know how to live, how to walk in the times we're living in. And so as a result, take a moment to subscribe. And when you do push on the bell icon to make sure that you receive notice every time I release a new video. Now, as I said, God is releasing the prophetic word like never before because it is needed on the face of the earth. At Pentecost, we know, you know in Acts that uh, the prophet was quoted when he said, in the last days, you know, I'll pour out my spirit on all men and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. That happened at Pentecost, but we are still living in those times and God is ramping up the numbers of those who are functioning in the prophetic gifting hard. Even Moses said in Numbers eleven twenty nine, you know, to Joshua, are you zealous for my sake? Oh, that all of the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. We are living in those times. And so even though things are shaking, these are times of opportunity like we have not seen before. So how do you know that you are called to prophesy to kings, to presidents, to rock stars, to rappers, all of those people? Well, number one, you dream about it. Literally, you have dreams about it that recur. I was listening to an interview recently with a young prophet, and I loved listening to it. He's a dreamer in the prophetic realm. And he dreamt about the fact that, you know, he and Jay-Z were in bed together. And as I heard that, I thought, what? But he went on to explain they were fully clothed, they were sitting on the bed, and they were talking. And in English, when you're in bed together with someone, it usually means you're doing business with them. And so he dreamt that he was actually consulting for Jay-Z as a prophet. And, you know, just talking to him about, you know, what God was saying Jay-Z needed to do, what were the steps he needed to take. And as they were talking, another rapper came in. And this time it was a female rapper. She absolutely does not know God. I'm not going to name any names, but uh, he did not recommend that we watch her videos. But she came in and she sat down on a chair, you know, and joined the conversation. And after listening for a while, she looked at this young man who had had that dream and she said, you know what? We need what you prophets carry. I really found that very, very strong. We need what you prophets carry, but many of you are fake. And then that hit me to the core. We need what you prophets carry. This is a call to anyone who has a heart now to prophesy to kings, to presidents, to rappers, to rock stars. This is a clarion call. We need what you prophets carry, but many of you are fake. As God's spirit dwells upon you to, you know, start to prophesy to people in this category, it's so incredibly important that we are real and that we are teachable. That is an absolute 
must. Anointing will get us places. Revelation will get us places. But our character is what's going to keep us there. And the world is longing for character right now. We need to be real and we need to be teachable. How do you know if you're called? I've already said it. You know, you have dreams about prophesying to kings or presidents or film stars or rappers. It's not wrong to have dreams about prophesying to these people. If you are not willing to go, who will to reach them with the gospel of Jesus Christ and also with God's words of life? However, God says character. So we have dreams about it. We pay attention to our characters and let God work on that. And in order to confirm for yourself, you know, that you are really called to do that now, often what you can do is when you have dreams about this, ask the Lord to give you the same dream again. And you can say, Lord, if this is you, just give it to me again so that I can know it's you. The Lord said, for example, in Genesis, when Joseph was talking to the Pharaoh, you know, Joseph said to the Pharaoh, he said, God has given you the same dream in two different forms because he has firmly decided to do it. I notice when I dream and I need to be sure this is God, I pray and I ask him for confirmation, often by giving me the dream again. Another way that you can know if you are called to prophesy to these highly positioned people is actually some of you heard that from the moment of birth or of rebirth. Now, we all know the story of Jeremiah the prophet in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 10. God says, see, I have set you this day over nations and over kingdoms. Jeremiah spent a lot of his time and his ministry, prophesying to kings, prophesying to the high priest, prophesying to people of influence in society. He got a lot of pushback for it, but he prophesied to people of influence in society because God had called him. And God told him, from the moment you were in your mother's womb, I saw you and I called you to be a prophet. However, some like the Apostle Paul, for example, they didn't know they were called until the moment they were born again. And we're going to spend some time looking at this because we're not only going to talk about Paul's calling, but about the reaction to the calling and the reaction that you can expect if you are called to this kind of ministry. And I believe that many of us are. Paul, he was converted to Christ in, uh, yeah, in a very, very dramatic encounter with God. And many of us know that. In Acts chapter 9, verse 15, you know, it talks about the fact that after Paul had seen a bright light and he was blinded, actually, it was a blinding light, the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. Now, God was speaking to Ananias, who was called to go and to lay hands on Paul. Paul, at that time, the best thing that we can compare him to is, for example, somebody who's out on jihad. He was out to murder people who confess the name of Christ, and he did murder and have them murdered. And so as a result, can you imagine if God called you to go and lay your hands on the head of the jihad in your nation? I can imagine what Ananias must have felt like, but the Lord was clear in his instructions. He said, go for it. Paul is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name between gen before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. And then God added something else for Paul, for I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. So Ananias, we know the story, got up and went, and as he prayed for Paul, scales fell from Paul's eyes, and Paul regained his sight. And that moment, Paul became the apostle Paul. Saul actually became the apostle Paul who actually changed the nations, you and I, are here because of the work that Paul did. So Paul knew at the moment he was born again, because God also told him that. In Acts chapter 22, 
You know, we see Paul testifying again of the calling of God on his life. And he talks about the fact that um, he's standing actually before the Jewish leaders and the Roman government governor, and he's telling his testimony. And he talks about the fact that God said to him, actually, that the Jews would not accept his testimony. He told a lot about, you know, the background, his background, the encounter with God on his, the road to Damascus, his conversion, and all that God had used him to do. But in verse 21, the Lord, he says, but the Lord said to me, go, for I will send you far away to the Gentiles. That was his call. People weren't going to accept his word, not the religious ones, the ones who already knew Christ. And why am I saying this to you now? It's because as God calls us to go to those who don't know him in these kind of places, the rock stars, the rappers, those who live lifestyles that are so against what we believe in, the religious spirit is going to start to oppose you badly. Because as soon as Paul said this, the mob that was listening as he was speaking to the Jewish leaders and the Roman governor, they erupted and they said, away with this man. In other words, kill him. This man is not fit to live. The religious spirit is going to come up. We have lived in times past in which we have not only made a divide between sacred and secular, but between where we can go and where we can't. God says to each one of us today, we are to be in the world, but we're not of it, but we are to be in it. And if God calls us to these people, you can bet that you're going to get opposition from the religious spirit. Anyway, if Paul got it, we will get it. But that is part of the calling also of those who are called to go to prophesy kings and presidents and those in places of high position. Now, I really am talking about this because as I was preparing for this video, I realized that for quite a while, I dreamt that God would send me to prophesy to Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga, many of you know, an immensely talented woman who is, uh, I would just say spiritually searching, but immensely talented. And to Lady Gaga, the Lord would say to Lady Gaga, I've seen you, I've seen your tears, but from the time you were in your mother's room, I created you to be a mother to many, many, many of the next generation who hate themselves, who have problems with self-image, who actually are on the verge of suicide. The Lord says to Lady Gaga, I, am call I have called you to actually speak words of life to them, but I also want to speak words of life to you, says the Lord. Lady Gaga, the Lord says to you that you are mine. And so Lady Gaga, God sees you. He has seen you from the time you were a child. Every tear that you've ever wept, the Lord has seen it. And God is saying, my daughter, I've called you to know me. But then also from that position of knowing me, the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who came in the flesh, I will empower you to go out and through your music, but also through the gifts of wisdom that I have given you to actually to give the next generation hope, to help them to know that I love them, says the Lord, and to help them to know that I have a plan for their lives. Lady Gaga, I bless the anointing to mother people, to see them come into, you know, the fullness of who God has created to be. And I bless you to just answer the call of God on your life. He's knocking on the door of your heart. And he said, if anyone hears and opens the door, ask me to come into their lives and I will come in and start 
to reveal myself to them. And I bless you now in the name of Jesus. That's a dream that I've had that keeps recurring. The Lord keeps saying to me, and so as a result, Lady Gaga, if you are listening, I just bless you with that. The Lord sees you. He knows you. He loves you. And so I bless you in the name of Jesus. For all of you who are called to uh, just prophesy to those in uh, places of influence, whether you know them or not, the Lord wants you to know it's time for you to take this seriously. And so as a result, I just bless you now. In the name of Jesus, I loose the calling of God over many, many of you, because God is saying many, many of you watching this video today are called to prophesy to people in positions of influence. I loose that calling. I loose the anointing to dream your dream life. And I say, come up higher, come up higher in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you for this coming week. And I look forward to having you join me next week for my next weekly word of prophetic encouragement. Thank you.